Chris Brown, Steve Tasker with you. And joining us now, NFL Film Senior Producer and also co-host of ESPN's NFL Matchup Show, Greg Cosell joining us. His appearance on the show presented by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. All right, Greg, we know that the Cowboys play more man coverage than any other team in football. 47% of their snaps, according to the stat service I subscribe to, that is a fat number, uh, but they play confidently and they have a pass rush to support it. Have you seen at any point in this season anyone capably exploit that aggressive man coverage that the Cowboys play? Oh, sure. There have been examples without question. Um, Deron Bland is a very beatable corner. Uh, all his interceptions almost all come from a specific kind of route and specific way in which he plays he's kind of a a sitter and a squatter and he jumps routes but he gets beat a lot and he's he is definitely a corner you want to go after um Gilmore has played really really well the last couple of weeks um you know he's been he's a veteran corner he's just been a really good player in his long career but there's no question that you can go after Deron Bland now almost always they play sides um, two weeks ago when they played the Seahawks, uh, what happened was is uh, Metcalf was eating up Bland, and in the second half, they basically said, we've had enough of that, and they made sure that Bland did not match up to DK Metcalf. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can, you can attack them. The main thing is really protection because they are – you're seeing Bland. This is what he does. You see that, you know, he jumps routes. He sits, he squats, and jumps routes. That's his game. Um, but the main thing with them is is uh, their ability to rush the quarterback. They're incredibly multiple with their uh, deployment of personnel and their front alignments. They stunt as much, if not more, than any team in the league. Um, you know that they line up Micah Parsons in multiple spots. Uh, they do the same thing with Demarcus Lawrence. You'll see that with Dorrance Armstrong as well. Um, they are a very, very difficult defense from a, a pass rush standpoint to deal with. What if, uh, it, without Hankins in the middle, their defensive tackle being out, how much more vulnerable to the run are they and how much have they been? I mean, they're middle of the pack yeah. statistically, but is it is that not what your eyes tell you? No, that's not what my eyes tell me. Now, let's put it this way. I don't think you're going into this game – saying, you know, the foundation of what we do is going to be running the ball between the tackles. Um, they still have other good players. Odigi Zoo is a really good player. Um, I actually think the rookie who may get more snaps now, Mozzie Smith from Michigan, I think he's a really good prospect. Um, so, yeah, I don't think, Steve, that that's the way you approach this game. You're not going to win this game with, with you know, 35 carries and 190 yards. That's not that's not going to happen on Sunday. Now, you have the Josh Allen factor as a runner, obviously, but I'm talking sure. about the more conventional, traditional run game with your backs. Right. With, yeah, under center, handing it off, that kind of thing. Even even with play action, how does has have teams tried to use play action as a way to hamper the ability of Micah Parsons and where to get – Lawrence to get into the backfield on pass plays. Yeah, I mean, look, I think that's part of every team's uh, you know approach. Um, you know, they're they're just they're just difficult to block. I mean, because they they're they line up in so many different spots, it becomes a, a mental challenge. You have to figure out how you want to deal with that. There's a lot of coaches I've talked to over the years that talk about the fact that when you play teams that move people around. You can't be worried as much about people as as where they are. So, in other words, you know, let's say Micah Parsons lines up head up over the center, which he does. You know, he, he's just the guy who's head up over the center. Now, for some teams, they take that approach. For other teams, they say, hey, that's Micah Parsons. And you know what? He's a problem, and we have to deal with that. I mean, here, he lined up over the guard on this sack that you just saw. So, you know, he he's – he is, I guess we can debate who the quote unquote best pass rusher in the league is, but he is the most sudden and most twitchy and most dynamic. He is just a phenomenal athlete. All right. Well, let's flip it around because as good as the Cowboys pass rush is, the Bills pass rush has more sacks on the season than Dallas. Um, what do we think about the Dallas offensive line? It's certainly talented. We know that. 
you've got a long in the tooth veteran on one side in Smith. Um, you got really good guards, you know, Zach Martin and the like. What what kind of vulnerabilities do they offer, if any? Well, here's how I'd answer that, Brownie. First of all, Tyron Smith has played really, really well for about six weeks now. In fact, he looks like he did five or six years ago. Yeah. He's been playing at a really high level. You're right about the two guards. Tyler Smith at left guard and Zach Martin at right guard, really good players. Um, Terrence Steele, the right tackle, is a beatable player in one-on-one -on -one pass protection. Um, so, you know, that's really important. You must squeeze the pocket on Dak. You must make him a little uncomfortable. He's been so comfortable the last number of weeks because the pass protection has been really, really good. And the thing that goes along with that, and by the way, I thought their pass rush on the final series against the Chiefs was outstanding. Yeah. Um, it was really, really good. And I love three the different fact guys. That yeah, I, I love the fact that they brought Rousseau inside, which we had talked about throughout the season at times. You know, I love the fact that they did that. I think he's really good in there. Um, but anyway, um, the thing I think that goes along with pass rush when you play the Cowboys is you must change the picture on Dak from pre-snap to post-snap. You can't allow him to just visually get locked in and feel like he's seeing it clearly and cleanly. And then you have a couple of other things that are probably situational. Um, you have to, at times play some kind of bracket coverage on Lamb. Now, the Cowboys know this, and they've moved Lamb around more this year. Obviously, yeah. a new coordinator with the head coach. They've moved Lamb around this year more than they have in previous years. He lines up outside. He lines up in the slot. He's their motion receiver. So it's not so easy just to say that. But there were snaps, as you guys know, where they bracketed Kelsey last week. You have to, you know, that, as I said, that's situational. That's not going to happen on every play. The other player on their offense, who I think is really good, is Jake Ferguson. And yeah, I think you have to be absolutely aware of him. If you play split safety coverage, which is the foundation of what the Bills play, too right. high split safety coverage, they've had some big plays with him down the seam because he has enough speed to be a three-level dimension. So, you know, I think he's the other receiver, and I'm almost certain he has the second most targets on the team behind Lamb. Dax Prescott seems to be a different kind of guy. Now, certainly, as you mentioned, he's gotten great protection. Um, and this five-game winning streak, four of them have been at home, so that's a little bit of a boost yeah. as well. And, the, you know, the fifth one was in Carolina, so uh, a team that's really struggling. What are your, what are your thoughts on how Dak – is he, he doesn't seem like the same guy that we've seen in years past. Yeah, I would say, number one, the comfort level is there. Um, and, and the other thing he's done this year, and quite frankly, guys, I didn't think he could do it anymore because, you know, each each offseason, I pick about 10 quarterbacks and watch about 250 to 300 dropbacks of those quarterbacks uh, because when you see it consecutively, you get a whole different feel. And Dak's a guy I've done for the last two, three years. And I really thought that his movement ability was over. You know, the last couple of years, he's been essentially a pocket quarterback. This year, though, and particularly over the last six, seven weeks, he's made a lot of plays off schedule second reaction movement plays that has now become a part of his game and therefore a part of their offense and i didn't think that he could do that anymore but that's another thing that you have to deal with when you play the cowboys but as far as dropping back seeing the field knowing where to go with the football making the right kind of throw he's playing as well as he ever has steve right all right, and then what about maybe the second level of that cowboys defense are there holes there to maybe exploit in the passing game because we know yeah. that they're bat the guys on the back end have been very opportunistic and we know what the pass rush can do is there is there some outlet for them to exploit at the second level well it's a fast defense the two linebackers that play you know when they play their their four two um whether it's conventional nickel or big nickel they they play a bunch with three safeties as well but the two linebackers are clark and bell bell's a converted safety Clark was the LSU kid who got dinged at the combine with a neck injury and had to sit out a season. But both those guys can run. They are a fast defense. Now, you're probably going to look to exploit them, ideally with things like misdirection, force them to have to cover, um, you know, to react to, to things in front of them. Um, but they're fast. Uh, they're really good athletes. So it's, it's you, you know, I, I would say that the defense doesn't have a defined weakness in the sense that you say, oh, yeah, they can't do this. That doesn't mean you can't beat them. Um, but, you know, they don't have that that 
one guy other than and i know this but like i said might surprise people but i think bland is the guy who's beatable now that doesn't mean you're going to throw at him on every snap but i think you have to throw at bland and make him have to cover routes um you know not just throw those quick game throws that's where he's at his best all right so you got dallas coming in the five game winning streak they're playing really well um and coming off a big win against philly What's what or what's the low hanging fruit for every team that plays the Cowboys? They've got to test them here. You know, the is there anything where you look at on film and every team seems to be trying them in this one area? Is there anything like that, or are they, you know, are they a team that just seems like you know you got to match your guys against theirs and try it your own way, or is there something about the Dallas Cowboys that every team seems to want to test? Um, I would say you've got to match your guys against their guys when they've not when they've lost. OK, uh, obviously, you can go back when they got beat by the Niners. They were just physically manhandled in that game. It was one of those games, um, you know, teams, even good teams seem to have one or two of those games a year. Um, I, I would say that, as I said, you go after Bland. You try to create one on one matchups against the right tackle, Terrence Steele. He's he, he's an up and down player. You, you want to try to beat him one on one. Um, those are two things that would immediately stand out to me. But when they played poorly, or, or poorly, relatively speaking, you know, Dak's not played well when that happens. Um, and that's why pressure is so important. You've got to speed him up. You've got to speed up his process. You've got to get him to play faster physically. Uh, that's when he hurries himself, and that's when he makes some poor throws. So you've got to get people around him. You've got to get bodies around him. You've got to squeeze the pocket, and you've got to find a way to do that. Now, we know this has been a really good pass rush team this year, the Bills, and they do it. They're not a big blitz team, so they do it with their down four, um, and that has to continue in this game. But this is not an easy O-line to do that against. Uh, right. Two really, really good kickers in this game as well. Aubrey is uh, a story unto himself yeah. as a rookie, you know, 30 for 30, a 61 and a 59 yarder last week, along with a 50, which seems just like a walk in the park for him. Um, but the weather looks like it's going to be a factor for the kicking game, Greg. Sustained winds of 15 to 18 miles per hour, wind gusts of 31. Um, Bass knows how this stadium plays in the weather. Aubrey does not. Um, if this is a close game, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, uh, yeah, I put my money on what Bass if it was a close game, without question. Um, you know, one thing we do know is that uh, Josh can throw it in the rain. We saw what he did in Philly when he was unbelievable, when right. he had over 400 yards of offense individually. You know, he's got big hands, big arm. You, you know, whether, I mean, unless it is a an absolute downpour, you know, a deluge, which from what you're saying, it, I don't think it's going to be quite like that. Um, no. But – if it's just kind of, you know, rainy but not terrible, you know, what we've seen in the past is it will not affect Josh Allen. Um, I can't recall Dak playing in one of these games recently, so I, I don't have a brilliant answer for that. But we know it won't affect Josh. Yeah, and when you get into these late-season games, it's always, it's stereotypical for teams like, well, you got to run the ball late in the year. And you got And that's – I mean, it sounds great. But you got to run your offense. Both these clubs are going to have to go back, and they're going to have to drop back to pass. I mean, right? I mean, you're not going to. Yeah. They're not going to turn. They're going to hand it off forty times. I don't care what I'm, it does, right? I'm so glad to hear you say that. You know, because it is such a wrong cliche to say, "Oh, yeah. you're playing the Northeast. You got to be able to run the ball." I mean, how many games really, when you look at his team season, are games where you truly can't throw the ball? I mean, you know. Uh, hardly any. I mean, we had a, one, the one a couple of years ago um, where uh, Mac Jones threw three balls, you know, that game, right. but, but how many games are really like that? Hardly any. It's just, it's just one of those platitudinous cliches that people throw out there that don't really have any basis in fact. Right. Yeah. Last one for you, Greg, uh, from me, a lot of people believe this is going to be a shootout style game. Uh, you know, we know that, Buffalo yeah. defense is not at full strength. Um, it looks like Dallas is only going to be missing Jonathan Hankins, which doesn't sound like a tremendous loss knowing the depth that they have. Can you foresee a higher scoring affair here, or do you think it goes the other way? You know, I, I, Brownie, I'm not a good prognosticator, but I'll say this. I, I have an odd feeling this game's not going to be – I mean, high scoring is a relative term, but I don't think we're looking at a 38-35 game. I could be dead wrong. I mean – 
I, I would assume someone would think that 24, you know, 23 is not a high scoring game. Is that, would you say that? I don't know how you guys feel about that. Yeah, I would say but that's think, not a high scoring game. Yeah. 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 I would, I would, to me, I think it's going to end up being more like that. And I, and I know some people listening are going to, if I'm wrong, I'm sure they'll tell me on Twitter, you know, that <laughs> uh, right. it won't be, it won't be the first time, um, you know, but I, I think it's going to be more like that for some reason. I just kind of feel that. I mean, look, look what happened last week in Kansas City. You know, the Bills defense, uh, you know, they it was unbelievable. I mean, you know, they, they did such a good job. They held, what was the final in that game? 2017, 2017 right? Yeah. 2017, yeah. I mean, you know. Sean, the defensive coaches, I think you've got to give them a ton of credit for all the injuries they've had and the fact that for the most part, you know, they've been able to keep it together. I mean, this, you know, they've not fallen apart on defense. Let's put it that way. You know, yeah, there have yeah. been big moments, but they've not fallen apart. Right. And I think you can say this game's going to, these teams are going to be between 17 and 25 points apiece. And, and it'll be somewhere in there. It's gonna. I, I. I think it's gonna be one of those single possession games, like we see so many Bills games get to, and and it'll be you know who either has the ball last or which which way the wind's blowing or something like that. Uh, I mean, anyway, when, when was the last time the Bills were blown out? Uh, I know this. It was twenty twenty one against the Colts, forty one to fifteen. Yeah. That was the Jonathan Taylor five touchdown game. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they don't really. Their last. I mean, their last I 10 games, their last 10 losses were by a combined 40 points, and the L.A. Chargers got beat by 42 last night alone. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, which, unfortunately, cost people jobs, which, I, you know, it, no yeah. one ever should feel good about that, no matter what you might feel about your team's coach. But, um, but you're right, the Bills do not get blown out. So, I, I just don't – look – Games are crazy. Maybe there's special teams touchdowns. Maybe there's crazy stuff, turnovers. You, you know, you never know. But I don't see in, in the normal course of a game, I, I, I guess I just don't see it as a 38-35 game. Right. I would say that. I would yeah. go with that as well. Particularly, yeah, in December when it's blowing around like that. Yeah, you take what you can get for sure. Uh, Greg, should we expect to see this game on the matchup show? It is part four. It's our full segment game, Brownie. And I did a piece – because when you play the, I did a third down piece uh, with two Josh Allen throws. Because when you play the Cowboys, you get two things on third down. You get high percentage man cover one, and you also get a smattering of cover two thrown in. Uh, so I did two plays, one versus cover one and one versus cover two. So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's our full segment game in part four. I think in awesome, a perfect man. world, the Bills aren't even getting to third down. That might, right. be, <laughs> that might be the solution. Right. I don't want Parsons well, running they're around they're on third. Down. They're not going to yeah. have zero third downs. I, yeah. I don't want anything more than third and four if we can help it. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, as always, Greg. Thanks, appreciate Greg. it. I right, appreciate it, guys. Thanks.